What happened? <laughs> Look around you and see who's missing and give them a call this week on the phone or email or text them and say, hey, we missed you. We're here every Sunday. All right. Good to see you here. We pray God's blessing upon you as God blesses us as we come into God's presence. We pray that all will keep their eyes open. Let's have a prayer. Great loving God, we thank you for the morning, the opportunity to be in your house, the opportunity to draw breath and, and get out of bed and get up and get here. Walt John always says in our right mind, but I'm going to say at, at, as close to our right mind as we can be. Lord, we pray that you would pour your spirit upon us this morning, that we, we would feel your presence, that we would get excited in worship, that we would come and presence and know that you are our Lord. Bless us this day. In Jesus' name. Amen. I got some announcements I want to share with you. Uh, one, we put it in the newsletter. It didn't make the bulletin. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, several weeks ago now, uh, Walter took a psychological exam, which is part of uh, becoming a licensed local pastor at Memphis Church. And uh, the, the administrator board the church council the church council voted to take care of that and we were asking for donations and so we need about four hundred dollars more for that donation so if you have a mind to support that ten dollars fifteen dollars whatever um, we're still collecting funds to pay for that so uh, be thinking about that youth group tonight at five o'clock and uh, 
So we invite you out. And we're expanding our youth group. We're going to expand our youth group because our youth group is so young and just getting started. A one-time blessing, we're going to ask fourth and fifth graders to join us. So the group will be from fourth to about eighth or ninth. We don't have any upper age kids yet. If we ever get them, we'll split the group. But uh, So if you have a fourth or fifth grader, we'd love for you to join us and be part of youth group at 5 o'clock on Sunday nights. We're also uh, reminding you that tomorrow's Bible study will be followed by our monthly luncheon, bag, bag lunch. Just bring a bag lunch to, to have and share and fellowship with everyone. The Bible study is at 11. If you can only join us for lunch, come around 12 and we'll have our lunch together. And there are other announcements. It's on the back of your bulletin. I'd like to remind you that next Sunday, May 1st, we'll begin a bereavement support group. Uh, if you've lost a loved one, if you've lost anyone that was close to you, you'd like to come and, and be in a group that would support you in that. Uh, you, you are not going to be asked to share anything, uh, but some will share. And maybe when they share, you'll feel a blessing, and maybe you'll want to share, or, or at least just receive a blessing from that. So it could be a spouse, it could be a child, it could be a parent, it could be a relative of other sorts, or it could be a friend. Just come and, and be part of that. And the support group will go for the Sundays of May. If the group wants to decide to continue after that, they may. Uh, but, but we'll be there on Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock. So Minister Walter will lead our adult Sunday school class. And those who want to join me will be in the chapel, which where the adult Sunday school class is, is just two doors over uh, toward the Locust Street entrance. So the chapel will be there. We'll have that at 9 o'clock next Sunday. I believe that's the announcements we need to share. We'll begin with our opening hymn. The opening hymn is The Voice of God is Calling, number four.
There is one God, there is one mediator, Christ Jesus, who came as a ransom for us all, to whom we testify. The same is sure and worthy of the full acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners and was manifested in the flesh, vindicated in the spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations.
like to just give a praise this morning. Uh, last week, uh, we had 145 folk in worship at the regular service. We had 35 at the sunrise service, and we had 147 online. So uh, we had 327 people last Sunday. All right, praise the Lord. Amen. We, we're almost getting more in person than we have online. That's, that's one of our goals. Get them here. Amen. Uh, praise the Lord. How about some other praises? Something you'd like to give God glory for this morning. Got a mic here? Or Nina? Good morning, blessings, everyone. Good morning. I just simply want to give God all the honor and praise that uh, he's done it one more time for us all. He's done it one more time to step in his house. And I just want to say I thank him as I took my steps, as I marched in his house, and I, and I said thank you all the way in here until I took my seat. And I just want to say again, hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. Amen. And I thank God. I thank amen. You. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Somebody else do a praise. Yes. Uh, last week I had tests on the parathyroid, and the test came back to be negative.
John, so keep your hands this way. Amen. I'm able to do this because there's an open pew on the back of the choir. We need more choir members. <laughs> All right. Gracious God, we just pray for John and we pray for Deb and we pray that uh, she would heal from that fall, but we also pray for John who Thursday will begin treatment. Uh, we again pray for that cancer to be removed, completely removed, and we pray, Lord, that you would uh, put your hand upon him, give him a calm sense of your control in all that is going on. Uh, be with his doctors, nurses, and caregivers. Heal him and strengthen him. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Anyone else with a prayer concern? Yes, over here. Thank you. Thank you. You you never know who's got troubles. You know, uh, even on Sunday morning, you know, people come in here and they march in here uh, with a smile on their face. You don't know the troubles they might be having in their life. And we need to pray for one another. Amen. One more. Okay, I hope this works. Um, I want to thank God for taking care of my daughter Becky. She was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2018, and she's come through it fine. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hello? Yes. <laughs> I like being so fun. So when I found out I was diagnosed, right, I wasn't scared. I felt empowered. Amen. And I think that was the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Amen. And that's the And I'll tell you that, you know, God says, don't worry about where you're going to eat, what you're going to wear. And these two right here are my angels. They, they provide for me and give me blessings and gifts and love that I could never repent. Amen. Thank you, Becky. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good. All and all the time. Amen. We're going to turn uh, our time of prayer over to Minister Walter as he leads us in our prayer time. Certainly we serve a good God. Yes. He was good this morning when he woke you up and closed you in your right mind. What a mighty good. God. We or close to it. close to it. We'll try something a little different. I see my cousin there, Charmaine. Might need you for a second. I'm going to try to sing a song this morning. How about that? All right. All right. <clears throat> How many of you know that we serve a good God and He is real? Yes. Yes. He is real. Can oh. Are you leaving? Oh. Something I may not know, 
There are some places I can't go, but I am sure of this one thing that God is real, for I can feel Him in my soul.
palm of your hand and in the path that you have set forth for us. We bless and we ask your blessing upon these gifts and upon the use of these monies that each sent with the use of the building of your kingdom and to your glory and honor. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our next hymn is number 181 in our hymnals, number 181. It is uh, East Service. Jack and Sylvia were here for Bible study this morning for Sunday school, and Jack started not feeling well. So please keep Jack Spencer in your prayers as he and, and uh, Sylvia went home. So keep them in your prayers. Let's pray. Eternal God, we come this morning asking once again that you would fill your vessel, Walter, with your Holy Spirit. That from the tip of his head to the tips of his toes, he would feel your anointing, and the power and presence of your Holy Spirit. As he proclaims the word today, may they not be his words, but the words you gave him to share. May they prick our hearts, and cause us to grow, and cause us to seek more after Jesus. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen.
If you don't believe that the Holy Spirit is in this church this morning, someone needs to check your pulse. Because the Holy Ghost is in the church. And somebody ought to say, Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus! Amen. 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 First, give an honor to God for allowing me to stand behind this second desk one more time. Um, it is good to be able to preach this morning. And as James Brown wrote a song, I feel good. Amen. And I feel good this morning. Amen. Um, I'd like to uh, recognize my godfather who snuck in the back door. You were standing there for a second. A master plumber. If you need a plumber. Amen. Good to see you. I uh, won't be before you long in this one. Uh, we thank Art for reading the scripture, and I won't read it until I get to that part in my message. Um, so if you would like to, to know the title, as is in the program, it's simply Help is on the Way. All right. Help is on the Way. Will you pray with me? Yeah. Dear Gracious Father, we come once again to give you all the praise and all the honor, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your help this morning, dear Heavenly Father. And Lord, we thank you for being with us every step. Lord, use me right now, Lord. As the words roll off my tongue, I pray that they're rolling through hearts and minds. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Help is on the way. Well, in life we are faced with many trials and tribulations. Someone this morning can witness about going through a situation and wondering how in the world that you will get out of it. Someone in this room once upon a time received a pay slip, didn't have a job, didn't know how you were paying your bills, and you asked the Lord, why, Lord? How can this happen? Someone in this room has lost a loved one, a husband, a wife, or even a child, and you wondered how would you get through it? Maybe there's someone under the sound of my voice who went to a doctor and received a bad report. Whether it was cancer, sugar, diabetes, high blood pressure, you wonder, Lord, why me? Lord, how can I get through? Mm -hmm. Beloved, I'm here to tell you at 1300 West Street, Trinity United Methodist Church, that help is on the way. Amen. Don't you worry about your situation because you serve a God that can get you through anything. I want to tell somebody in St. Matthew, brother kid, that he tells you that he's with us always, even until the end of the world. Of the world, of the world, of the world, otherwise, Lord Jesus, touch the tongue. Otherwise, the Lord is telling us that he's with us always. It doesn't matter how hard the situation may be. It doesn't matter how hopeless you may feel. You have a God that will be with you every step. You ought to tell somebody help is on the way. Help is on the way because we serve a God who won't give up on us. We serve the God who got us through anything. Beloved, our God got us through slavery. He got us through hard times. He got us through all the same God back then is the same God today. We must put our trust in God. Well, 1 Samuel 11, it talks about Nahash, the Amorite, went up beside Jabesh Gilead. And the man of Jabesh said to him, make a treaty with us and we, will, and we will subject you. But Nahash, the Amorite, replied, I will make a treaty with you only on one condition, that I gush out the right eye of every one of you. And so I will bring disgrace on all Israel. But love, I want to tell you that the enemy may come. The enemy may try to gush out your right eye. The enemy may try to put an X by your name. But if God sees fit, God won't let anything happen to his children. Because God loves his children. God is bigger than breast cancer. God is bigger than sugar diabetes. God is bigger than all the sickness in the world. The enemy may come creeping in your life, but beloved, I'm here to tell you, you ought to know the voice of Jesus. Yeah. Let me give you a little scenario. I have three little girls, and I begin to watch 
Looney Tunes. <laughs> Looney Tunes became a good thing for me at 9 o'clock in the morning. But I want you to know that you need to know the voice of Jesus. Well, it tells me about this wolf. This wolf that was very hungry and he was on this mountaintop and he seen these sheep in the field below. And he wondered how could he get close to them. He knew if he got close to them that they would run away. So he began to study the sheep week after week. He learned their language. So he went in this old barn and he found some wool. So he covered himself in wool. And he got the carriage to go in the pasture and he went this strolling on. And the sheep said, well, my God, we got a new friend. Well, the wolf went over, but there was one sheep that knew something wasn't right. One sheep said, my God, what are those big paws you have? What is that long thing coming out of your rear end? Why is your scalp so long? Beloved, the moral of the story that the enemy may come, beautiful, dressed in gold, looking good. But you ought to know the voice of Jesus. You ought to know where your help comes from. The enemy will try to destroy you. The enemy will try to kill you. The enemy will try to steal and throw you away like garbage. But Jesus, Jesus will pick you up, turn you around, place your foot on his solid ground. Beloved, you need to know the voice of Jesus because your help comes from that boy. Yeah. The elders of Jabez said to him, give us seven days so we can send messages throughout Israel. If no one comes to rescue us, we will surrender to you. Other words, he said, we need seven days to build our army. Jesus works just like that. In seven days, they, they form an army. Word got back to Saul. And Saul said the spirit fell on him heavy. Now I had to read this passage over and over because it said an angry spirit fell on him. And I said, well, we serve a God that doesn't do that. But then I thought about it, beloved. It's time for us to get angry. We need to get angry with Satan. We need to get angry how Satan is taking our children and infesting our communities with drugs. We ought to get mad this morning how Satan is killing our young kids. We ought to get mad this morning how there's a war going on, a, 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 a ridiculous war. We ought to get angry yeah. with Satan. We draw the line this morning and we dare Satan to cross him. But love, help is on the way. Saul gathered an army. 300,000 and 30,000, they came together. And let me tell you, before the sun came up, Jesus was there with them because they fell off their enemy. I want to tell somebody this morning, you ought to give all your problems to Jesus because Jesus will form an army to take the enemy out. You ought to put all your trust in Jesus' life uh, 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 J. did. You ought to give all your problems to him. Love, it doesn't matter. If Satan comes like the big bad wolf, mm. he may come and try to huff and puff and blow your house down. Mm. But I'm telling you this morning that help is on the way for you. Yeah. Don't you dare throw in that town. Don't you dare give up. Because help is on the way. You are going through something this morning, but I'm telling you that help is on the way. Don't you worry. Don't you give up. Put all your trust in the master hand because help is on the way. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you all. It's time we open the doors to the church. Now you have heard me preach. Help is on the way. But beloved, take it for yourself. Find out for yourself that you serve a God. With all your help in the palm 
of his hands. 39 stripes on his back. And believe it, your troubles it is in one of those stripes. We must trust in God. If there's one this morning who doesn't know Jesus for yourself, I'm speaking to you. Come and give your life to Jesus. Yeah. For Jesus is the only one with the power to get you through. Karen, if you don't mind explaining a little something. Don't you worry about your neighbor. Come forward yeah. and give your life to Christ. Is there one? Is there one? Like a horseman. A horseman can lead his horse to the water, but he can't make it drink. We invite you to God's altar and give your life to Christ. Give your heart to God, but give your hand to me and rain as we help save your soul this morning. Is there one? I believe that there's one here, but don't worry about anyone else. Worry about yourself. Calm down, for today will be the best day of your life. Is there one? Maybe there's someone that wants to. You ought to give God some praise. As we have witnessed tomorrow, very well may be too late. And if God were to choose your number, and you don't know where you'll spend eternity, I'm speaking to you. Come forward. If you were to leave this very turn and lose your life and you don't know where you will spend eternity, I'm speaking to you. Won't you come? We serve a miracle worker. A miracle worker. God is so good that I suffer with stage five kidney failure. But I'm glad because if I didn't tell you, you wouldn't know that I suffered from it. That's how good God is. Is there another? Trinity, you ought to be happy that two people gave their life to Christ this morning. What a blessing. Now, if it's on the way, Maybe there's someone who just wants to come and give their burdens to Jesus. They come and pray and give it all to Jesus. But promise yourself once you leave here that you leave it here at the altar. The song right says, Take your burdens to Jesus. He will take care of all.
brothers. If we just open ourselves up to God, we'll see things we've never seen before. That God wants to bless us. God ever wants to be with us. We just need to be open. We need to seek his face and desire his grace. So we're going to sing this closing song. And the altar rail is still open. If you'd like to come for any reason, come and pray. You know, if this church is like any other church, which it probably is, we've got troubles, and we've got joys. We've got things to thank God for, and we've got things to pray through with God. Come and pray. Come and pray that God would be a help. To see the help is coming. Amen? Amen. Several weeks ago, I announced that we were going to have a Sunday night service starting in May. Talking to worship persons and talking to staff, we've decided for the time being to wait on that because we want to pour more energy into this service to keep the momentum going. Uh, we're going to have 
as you did today, a taste of gospel, a taste of tradition, a taste of contemporary worship. We're going to begin to instill some excitement in our worship today. And so we're going to concentrate on this service. And when we start to burst at the seams, and we will, we're going to start to burst at the seams. We'll, we'll start a second service. Whether it's another Sunday morning service or a Sunday night service, we'll determine that later. Uh, but we're going to uh, just allow God to grow us and to minister to us. As people feel more comfortable coming out, as people get the excitement of what God is doing here at Trinity, people are going to come home to Trinity. And we're going to just be here to be a blessing to one another and to God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now go forth.